Hey, Oliver here from Spitfire Audio. I'd like to share a track with you I've written with an amazing set of tools. Uh, why this set of tools is my new go-to library, I'll tell you in a bit. And I also like to take a little bit of a detour, take you on an adventure and answer this very objective question uh, that you see in the title. So right at first, I actually want to show you why this is my new go-to library. And two things I always write with is the piano, because I'm a pianist, and the second one is the strings flautando from the chamber strings. However, there's these two things in, in this one toolkit that is already worth your money. So uh, we have the strings flautando, which is an ensemble patch. So um, I believe it's eight players and it's somewhere in between solo strings and chamber strings. So it's really a wonderful size. It's detailed, but you can add some splosh. You can change your signal here and it just sounds absolutely stunning. So I'm just going to play you a little bit just to, to, for you to understand how really stunning this is. Wow, it's somewhere between like uh, an evolving thing, but it's still it's the same note and it doesn't suggest any kind of compositional or pre-composed kind of sample, which is really an amazing kind of quality for a sample. I mean, the warmth and the depth of this recording is just absolutely insane. And I've sketched my track in the beginning with the piano, like, like I do many times. And, you know, not to this any kind of felt piano or anything, but finally this is just a really kind of normal, straightforward, beautiful sounding upright piano. I mean, this is really kind of simply played, but I think... I think it's really responsive as well, and even for like poppy stuff, I think it's it's really nice. I mean, I'll show you quickly just how I sketch this, this track a little bit. Like, I just played around with these two chords that I just recently really liked, which is F major 7. to A-flat major 7. I call this uh, 
piece Winter Fig Tree, and and if you know uh, uh, Fig Tree in winter, it looks quite scraggly and and almost dead. And now in this time in March, it's kind of when they start kind of blossoming a little bit, and there's a bit of hope in there. So this piece is is a little bit about that. And there's the hope. So I just sketched it, literally just following these chords. Here, not knowing where to go. But anyway, you get the idea. It's just a really wonderful tool, this one, to write with. And it just feels responsive, dynamic, and anything you want from a piano. Not too much character, not felted or muffled. So just really a pure joy. So as you can tell, I'm focusing here on the quality of the recording, on the meaningfulness of the sounds, on the depth uh, of the sound world, and just really the ease of uh, uh, using these sounds. And so it got me thinking uh, about how complicated does music need to be, or does music need to be complicated to be good? And for that, we need to understand what does complicated mean? What does good mean? So if we look up good, it simply means to be desired or approved of. So it doesn't really say by how many people or by who. And, you know, if, if we take Andy Warhol as an example uh, in the art world, he says if the right people uh, find it good or, you know, he, he refers to the rich people. If he hangs out with the rich people and gets someone rich to buy his art, he will have a price established. So I guess this would mean economically and business-wise, this would be a good piece of art. So if we look at the word complicated, it means consisting of many interconnecting parts or elements. It doesn't specify what kind of elements. It also doesn't specify uh, where the person that perceives it stands. So uh, walking, for example, a 30-year-old healthy person doesn't find walking complicated. A one-year-old toddler, however, finds it of course complicated. There's so many influences and so many aspects that could interrupt kind of the walk you know first of all they need they need to learn it they need to connect the dots they need to learn to stand uh, the type of shoe maybe depends the type of ground they're standing on etc uh, etc et and i think it's exactly the same with music so music could be perceived as complicated in a kind of early polyrhythmic so-called medieval isorhythmic motet Or a very obvious one that everyone perceives as complicated is very fast playing. Then scientists apparently say that the Javanese form of gamelan is the most complex music in the world, measuring the fluctuations in loudness using a heartbeat monitor. And then, of course, producing something amazing like this could be perceived as complicated. Choosing a kick sound is already an art in itself. Stretch my hands to you. Life like this is what your life like. Try to live the life right. And how do you feel about something like this? So many intricate parts and layers and it's so moving. Yet there's not too much happening in terms of changing of the note or changing of the chord or fast playing, etc. Yet it's so, such an emotional and kind of grabbing sound. And what about the intricacy of the energy and emotion in this kind of performance? Did you hear how we went back to this one single note and his genre-defining uh, vibrato and just saying so much with very kind of, you know, simple, technically simple kind of lines, yet there's nothing simple about the delivery and, and again, the complexity of his emotions and energy that he conveys to this uh, really uh, special and unique setting. And talking about one note, you know, we only have to play two seconds and you know exactly who it is.
So you see where I'm getting at with kind of the quality of the tone and to bring it back a little bit again into the, the classical world and, and the soundtrack world, you know, we have real pioneers with Arvo Part uh, creating their own sounds and really sculpting their sound world. And another master of his art creating stunning landscapes, of course, Oliver Arnold's. So for me, each kind of music has its own complexity, its own interconnecting elements. And I believe that each track, each sound will resonate with somebody out there on some point in their lives. And that's important. That's what's all about. And bringing it back to Heirloom, I think this is exactly what kind of resonates with me, like the quality of the recording, the quality of the sound, the warmth. You know, if I just play this bass clarinet, clarinet on the lowest dynamic here. It's like, it's like a sine wave. Uh, I put a sine wave here as a sub bass, but many times it's just not even needed. I mean, listen when this comes in. Just the way it's recorded. I mean, I'm selecting here also uh, the close mic here, so it's really warm and right there. And you get into this real raspiness. So, wow. So, okay. So you get like the strings and the piano and you get a, a couple of treats, really specific one, a bass clarinet, a tubax and a guitar harmonics, for example. Actually, I'm just going to play you this. And, you know, this was uh, inspired uh, by a track. Actually, I'm going to play this to you first because it's almost flat out stolen there. Um, a track by Marco Beltrami. Here is my guitar part, fairly similar. You have some really lovely shimmers there. Some really beautiful swells. I'm just using them very sporadically to kind of create a little bit of depth, but it's just so nice and useful. And again, the strings, I mean, I've played you the flautando uh, already, just really playing around on two or three chords, you know, F major seven, A flat major seven. Just really, really lovely to write with. And so if you want to get a little bit of detail into your string writing, into your flautando, then you can go to your legatos, high or lows. Or of course, if you want uh, that kind of detailed writing from the beginning, you use the legatos uh, just on their own. Uh, in my case, it's just enhanced a little bit of a chord change uh, rather than writing something really big melodic here. So you can also hear that 
uh, the legato is played a little bit more expressive. So as soon as you go up with the dynamic wheel there, you hear a bit of vibrato. And if you go down, it becomes more like flautando and softer and non-vibrato. And it's really, really nice to write with. And it just feels really real and natural. Uh, same with the low strings there. And then here in the end, I'm using uh, these like chimes, uh, kind of chime-like sounds. They're quite beautiful. I'm using them as like in the outro as little drops, but of course they're like mini performances, kind of mini swells, and you can use them also more like down here. <laughs> really cool. Uh, it's just velocity sensitive as well. So, you know, it gets you a really, really long way, uh, I believe, this, this toolkit. The last element here to my composition is the tubax or contrabass saxophone. And again, how this is curated is just so, so lovely. gets all the way into the uh, raspy bits there uh, and, and again in the low dynamics. Just really a special sound I believe and uh, quite useful. And then my mix I'm adding here quite a bit of splosh and reverb here. My strings go through through bus number 10. I like to take out a little bit around 2K. This is just kind of a personal preference. Also quite happy and nice to take it out. But for me, it adds this special uh, warmth uh, if I take out a little bit there. Not always. If I write fast passages, a brighter track, I wouldn't do that, for example. I have a bit of plate as well uh, on these tracks just to give another flavor of reverb in there. And yeah, fairly simple, not really much else uh, on there. And I guess to kind of sum it up in the curator's words, Keaton Henson, who really, really has done a fantastic job and really reflects his kind of artistry in this library. <laughs> Again, his attention to detail and intimacy have really translated well into this toolkit. I'm going to play you my track one more time. It'd be great if you left your questions and comments in the comment section and let us know what kind of music gets you going, what kind of music do you find complicated or inspiring. Uh, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Take care and see you on the next one. Bye bye.